There are moments in history when a single name echoes across the entire planet. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, the moon, 1969, the day humanity left its mark on another world. But while two men walked on the surface of the moon, there was a third, drifting in complete silence, far above them, unseen by the cameras, unheard by the world. Michael Collins, the man who didn't walk on the moon, the man who stayed behind, and at one moment in time, the most alone human being in the entire universe. Imagine it. Your crewmates are making history on a foreign world. The world is watching. But you? You're circling above, alone, 60 miles high, behind a lifeless moon. No signal, no voices, just darkness. For 48 minutes each orbit, Collins lost contact with Earth. No mission control, no crew, just the hiss of the radio and himself. He wasn't just isolated. He was the furthest any human had ever been from all of humanity. And for nearly an hour at a time, he was entirely cut off from every other human being. Truly, the loneliest man in history. But this wasn't an accident. Michael Collins was handpicked, a skilled test pilot, calm, brilliant, a leader. He trained with Armstrong and Aldrin for years. He knew he wouldn't be walking on the moon, but he accepted it, gladly, because someone had to stay. Someone had to make sure they could come back home. The Columbia Command Module was their only ride back to Earth. Collins was its guardian, its pilot, its protector. He kept it alive in lunar orbit, monitored every system, prepared for every emergency. If something had gone wrong on the moon, Collins would have faced an unbearable decision. Return alone or risk everything to try and help. He later wrote, I am alone now, truly alone and absolutely isolated from any known life. I am it. If a count were taken, the score would be three billion plus two on the other side of the moon and one plus God knows what on this side. Can you imagine that? The weight of that silence? The knowledge that you are completely alone, orbiting a dead world, and all of Earth is just a tiny blue dot in the distance? And yet, he never panicked. He never wavered. He stayed sharp, focused, and ready. Because the mission depended on it. While the world watched men walk on another world, Collins waited. 21 hours. He orbited the moon 30 times. He was the connection, the glue, the invisible hero of Apollo 11. And when they came back, when the lander reconnected with Columbia, Collins was there, ready. The reunion was flawless. The mission was a success. Humanity had taken its greatest leap and Collins had made sure they could come home. Armstrong and Aldrin became legends, rightfully so. But Michael Collins, he stepped out of the spotlight, quiet, humble. He didn't mind not being the face of the mission. He once said, I know that I would be a liar or a fool if I said that I have the best of the three Apollo 11 seats, but I can say with truth and equanimity that I am perfectly satisfied with the one I have. Michael Collins didn't need to stand on the moon to be part of history. He was already part of something greater than himself. He helped carry humanity across the void and back again. He was the loneliest man in history, but he was never truly alone. Thank you for watching this story of courage, solitude, and quiet heroism. If this video moved you, if you learned something new, or if you simply love these kinds of human stories from the edge of the unknown, please take a second to like the video. It really helps. And if you want more deep dives into untold stories from space, science, and history, subscribe to the channel. We've got so much more coming. Now here's a question for you. If you had the chance to go to space, knowing that you might end up completely alone like Michael Collins, would you take it? Let me know in the comments. I'll be reading them.